Hey, this is Annex, and this is going to be another tutorial about kicks in hardcore and Frenchcore. Uh, but I'm going to go a little more into the theory, so on how you can look at the waveform and use that to troubleshoot and understand what your kick's doing. If you didn't watch the other two I did before that, it probably will make more sense if you do. Um, I drew this diagram in the first one, and I'm using the same colors and basically the same kick um, in this tutorial as I did in that tutorial. So the pink here is the talk, the orange is the middle, and the yellow is the high, if that makes sense. So uh, yeah, it's not exactly the same kick, but it kind of is, um, more or less. So we're in arrangement view now in Ableton, and the last tutorial we were in session view. This is an arrangement. So what arrangement means is you're looking at the layout of your song or whatever components of your song over time. And that's how you see the milliseconds on the bottom. So remember milliseconds are thousands of a second. And we also see bars on the top. And it can do this for us because we tell it what the BPM is. And for us, the BPM is 200 beats per minute. Okay, so what I do for the kick, so I make the three different components with MIDI instruments. And for the talk, so for the attack, I use uh, kick two in this case. And this is kind of what the waveform looks like. So I'll talk about the waveform more in a bit, but basically the higher peaks are louder in a waveform and the lower parts are quieter in a waveform. So looking at this kick would mean like it starts very loud at this point, And as we go over, uh, in time, it goes to zero, and that's just a little bit over one and a half or a half bar. And here, to take a step back, so we're looking at four kicks here, so one bar, because we're working in four over four, and one kick is a quarter note. Uh, we have four kicks over this one bar. And in the last tutorial, I discussed, uh, so we looked at just the one kick by itself, but in arrangement view, it's easier to do this, and it helps you get an idea of how the waveform looks uh, also over time. So you can see actually how it's playing out more and not just in a loop like you work in session view. Okay, so that was the attack. This is the mid. I have a serum wavetable. So these are the two kind of sine wave combinations that are being used to generate the resulting audio waveform in my mid. And I won't talk about these yet, um, but this is Serum, so they're wave tables. So it actually uses a lot of different uh, formulas to come up with this, uh, these two um, yeah, waves, and then it combines them by oscillating both of them together. Uh, I'll talk about that later. Um, in the high, I do something similar. So I also have Serum and I have two waveforms, and those waveforms are made out of a wave table. So uh, the last uh, tutorial, we only looked at MIDI, but now I'm going to break it down into the waveform. So when I play it out uh, from MIDI, it records into audio the way I have it set up. So this is like I send each of these tracks, well, I send each of these tracks into their respective uh, audio channel. So instead of going to the master, they were going to these channels and then they can record uh, separately and then I can look at their waveforms separately and make sure they're doing what I want them to be doing. I'm going to play it out for you because in one of my last tutorials someone complained I didn't play the kick until like minute 22 so <laughs> here's what it sounds like. Okay so it's not the best kick ever but you get the idea. It's just for explanation purposes. And also for troubleshooting, I mean, you don't want to use your favorite kit because you want to find things that are wrong uh, to use it to troubleshoot and fix it. Okay, so when it records, so when each of these tracks records, it's recording to the track of the same color. So this talk records to the talk audio, the mid records to the mid audio, and the high or the tail end records to the tail audio. And this is more or less what we expect the three different waveforms to look like. So this talk is what we saw in kick two, remember? It's just the basic, yeah, this is a techno kick, I think, called boing two. 
Uh, so just your basic attack. And here we're looking at um, amplitude. So the height of the waveform, it's kind of analogous to the gain or the pressure that's created by the energy moving um, through the air from the sound wave and over time. So we're going from left to right. So left is the starting point and right as we go forward in time. You can see you can track the, the cursor as it goes through. So it's, it's returning because I just looped it. That's why it keeps going. Okay, so this mid audio is a little more interesting because this waveform is the result of these two waveforms oscillating against each other, so combined on top of each other from these two waveforms. But it's also compressed because I sidechain and compressed this part of my bass to the talk. And as I discussed that in my last tutorial, that's how you get the pumping effects in basically all EDM and French core and hardcore is no different. So that's why we see the reduction in the gain here at the beginning. So that means that the, the waveform at the beginning is smaller than the waveform at the last part of this kick component. And we can see that because basically the waveform is smaller, meaning it has less amplitude and less gain and you hear it more quietly. Okay, so exact same thing happens for the tail. So this is how the tail looks like and we only want it in the last half of the kick because it doesn't do anything for us in the first half. Um, if we put it in the first half, it just sounds really messy and it, yeah, it doesn't combine really well, at least in this case. And I have it going from a low decibels to higher decibels. So that's how we see the waveform going from small on the left to bigger on the right. Excuse me. Because I also sidechain compressed it to the mid, which I talked about in the last tutorial. So I turned it off now because I was troubleshooting. Um, but this is how it would look. So. This compressor is on my high track, on the tail track, and I sidechained it with the mid. So anytime the mid plays, uh, the high waveform gets compressed. And I also used some volume shapers on here. So that's kind of what you see this envelope like. And in Arrangement View, you can do this quite easily. So this is the same as what I was doing for the LFO on the last example. So this means these tracks, so this talk starts playing to here and then it gets quieter all the way from, yeah, almost zero decibels, so it's the loudest, to the quietest. So here we stop hearing this kick. And the same for the mid. So it starts out almost at 100% loudness um, for digital loudness and then it gradually goes to zero. And that's just so we can shape each of the parts of the kick. So I'm not going to talk about the MIDI more than that in this tutorial, but I'm going to talk about the audio form. So audio is what we see once we record something. Uh, yeah, let me show you what this sounds like again and with one by one. So that's a talk that's just basically a yeah, techno kick. And this one is way more crunchy and excited um, because we had like that really crazy waveform and those wavetables we were combining. And it also has that pumping effect because it goes from quieter to louder within the one kick. And with our tail, we hear something similar. And then when I play them uh, all together, you still kind of hear the three parts <laughs> separate well, once you know what they sound like. Uh, with one other thing, so I mean this high is an A0, so it's still quite a low frequency. I think it's 55 hertz because it's yeah the fundamental frequency of the low A note in pitch. Um, but I EQ it so it's pulling up the higher frequencies. So this means it's not getting uh, overlap with the other uh, stuff in your kick that comes lower, but we're pulling out the, the later harmonics that happen for this part of the bass. 
So it's still bass because it's still a, like a really low note you're playing as a fundamental frequency, but it like keeps vibrating up into these higher pitches. And this is what we want to capture with this shape here. And okay, now we know what these three things look like. And then you can record them again. And this is what your final kick looks like. So basically this, well, these are four kicks, but this kick is what these look like recorded on top of each other. And it's gonna sound the same as if we just played the same thing as we were playing. And a few basic things to note with your kick. Um, so I like to use like a reference kick to compare also in the waveform. So this one I'm using a peacock kick to compare with. And with hardcore and French core, you want the kick to basically fill up the whole sound box. So like I showed you here, you want it to be like as loud as possible over the whole kick basically. And that's what we see in both of these kicks. So in my reference kick, it's a Dr. Peacock kick. We see the talk at the beginning, the middle in the middle, and then that uh, higher frequency harmonic, yeah, harmonic saturated stuff on the right. And it sounds like this. Oh, I was doing something to that. So you can also do this, like find a song with a kick you really like or find a sample online. And then uh, if you're using a song to sample, I mean, don't just sample someone else's kicks and use it because it'll also be poor quality. Um, but try to pull out a kick uh, just so you can see the waveform of it. Uh, so try to find a part in the chorus that doesn't have any overlapping instruments and just basically slice out the kick. So you can look at it like this and you can make a loop and use it to troubleshoot. And you can work through it like with an LFO like this. And this is basically, uh, yeah, just a, a volume wave shaper. So with the top here, the, so this remembers like what we're seeing, this kick down here is the same as what we're seeing in this view in the box. Cause this LFO oscillates every quarter of a bar. So every beat in four, four time. So here I wanted to see, okay, what is the attack sound like? So I only let this part play and I shut this part to zero decibels. And then you can do the same to the middle. So that's more or less what the middle sounds like, like our orange track, that would be the equivalent. And then you do the same thing for the high. I don't know why that was clicking when I made it smoother, it should have done the opposite. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, again, with the high, you have like a more stereo image and you can add more distortion, uh, whereas in the low, you want it to be really clean. So if you work through a kick like this, you can really understand what's, well, it helps you to understand uh, what's going on in the different parts. And then you can decide what the sound is that you want to make and then kind of see how somebody else has done that, or at least how the outcome of that looks when someone else did it. And then basically compare yours to theirs um, I do a lot of like visual based stuff. So everyone says, yeah, don't rely on your eyes, rely on your ears, especially for music production. Um, but for me, it's also important to see like how it looks because I understand a lot better when I understand, yeah, what's going on in a way you can represent visually. And then I can translate that to what I'm hearing and then it helps for me to yeah, make better music. Okay, so I'm gonna keep this tutorial short and I'm gonna do a follow-up one where I go more on the theory of the waveforms, more in depth. Um, one more thing, if I, so say I told you this high here was quite low, so this was a A0 and you're not hearing it because it goes 
to that audio track, it doesn't go to the master. So if you make it into, a, into two octaves higher, what is it? Okay, so this is an A2 here. So I think this is hitting, what, 220 hertz. Um, it influences the sound quite a bit. So that's like a really high stabby kind of thing. And now I'm just uh, playing around with it. So I took off this tail here. I took off this A0 uh, note that we were playing for the tail and I turned on the A2 note that we were playing for the, the tail. And you can just see what the difference sounds like and also see what the difference looks like. So here we have higher frequencies. So we're gonna have a more excited waveform uh, because you have a frequency is basically cycles or oscillations per second. And when you have more oscillations per second, you have a more um, yeah, excited waveform. So if you compare it to this one, this is what, I don't know, four times as excited as this one, because this is 55 Hertz and this is 220 Hertz, if my math is not wrong. But I will go into that in the next tutorial and then we can go more in depth into that. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions or you want to learn something else. And yeah, I might be able to teach you it.